whole grill. I'm just gonna smoke those for an hour and then wrap them. I'm gonna trade a knife with a dude. He's making me a knife, but she's getting the lure, I think. NW Blades. I asked for a chef knife and they're getting a flappy poppin' bass. There'll be a joint right there. She wanted something in largemouth bass, and it's hard for me to think of anything cooler than that sized, big open mouth, poppin' on the top, flappy tail on the back, so when it pops, it'll like kick off, you know? Pop, pop, kind of walk and pop, but I don't want to call it that because there's already something that is that. Flappy poppin' bass is a much better name. This will be the wood master, and multiples more will be made out of resin from a silicone mold. Multiples more. That could mean two more or a hundred more. I don't know. We'll see how much I like this lure, who knows. I don't know where Chip went. Oh, what do you know? Chip. Okay, okay. Thanks a lot, Chip. Here's how the ribs turned out. Oh, we got some stickers. I'll take care of those. Are you gonna put your slurping noises in there, honey? <laughs> yeah. There's potatoes in those other ones. It's two weeks later. I've rearranged the garage. Paint station used to be right there. Now it's back there. And I've had a change of heart. I don't claim to need things to inspire me to do them, but this wasn't inspiring me. So, I found a lovely picture of a large mouth bass that did, and then I'm gonna try to pack as much detail as I can up into the head of this thing. This drawing is so detailed. It's inspiring me to be detailed. I have an aversion against sounding artistic, I think. Makes me wanna throw up. it will pop. Nifty. It's gonna be able to have like a flat kind of throat and the gills stick down a tad. Old flat throat. About to work on the flappy part. This will help me hold on to it. 
There's my center line. We got that one pretty thin. Very even tail slot, but it needs to be a lot thicker. I usually just fold 150 and invest a large amount of time into the thickness of a tail slot. And to incrementally thicken your sandpaper, don't just fold it again, stick one sheet of thickness in there and get it used to it. We're gonna be able to creep the fit up nicely. I'm just rubbing it on the belt sander, being careful not to turn it on. I really should have cut this joint before carving out the body, but I did not know I wanted this joint where I want it now. The only reason that the joint's gonna go there is because I don't know what that's gonna do. But you don't really see poppers with glide bait-like joints. So what, what's it gonna do? Maybe nothing? Or maybe all of our wildest dreams will come true. Probably nothing. kind of a cool looking cut. It's like growth rings, but that's definitely opposite of growth. Since we're dealing with resin, it's going to be one of them joints, door hinge. This is getting me a little giddy. It's surprising how many years you can do something. I'll think, why have we not done something like this before, you know? Why? A lot of people are not comfortable with putting their fingers that close to a bandsaw blade. And neither am I, but I just do it anyway. I can already smell the super glue and baking soda. All those little gaps right there, they need filled. But we've got a good lineup.
drew some lines on the tail fin. Those are just what I'm going to follow, roughly, with that bit. When fins get this small, I think it's best just to do this. Prepare yourselves, you're about to see the whole picture. The pretty much finished wood carving of the Flappy Poppin' Bass. There's just not a lot left in the bucket, so I don't want to use my giant obnoxious macho drill. There's a lot of stuff I don't put in videos. Re really dumb stuff like that. It's all too common. We got three molds to fill. <sighs> this bucket had a dead spider in it. I just blew one of its legs into my eyeball, I think. That got all over my finger. I found the spider. It'll just be on like the side of the bass's face, right in the middle of the biggest gill plate. Curled up spider impression on every casting. That's the kind of stuff you get from a marling bait. Unique things like that. Oh, this stuff is thick. It's like the closest thing to stirring a solid. How about a lovely degassing? There's that tail slot in the back piece, so I poured that amount, and I'm just gonna let that fill in and move on to pouring the next piece. I'm not worried about anything on this front piece. This is getting awkward. That was just drizzling everywhere. I'm sorry, fellas. How unsatisfying. See you in eight hours. We're ready. A small amount of silicone slipped through to the other side, but I can peel that off and over here. That one's clean as heck. We're, uh, we're hung up under a key. What is going on? Gotta remember to let some air pass through on those skinny parts. Unfortunately, that goes down. I, I just, whoopsie doopsie, I just cut that the wrong direction. It doesn't matter. I'm gonna have one coming up too. I've decided it will be best if I tilt them in this orientation. That way the quarter ounce of bird shot that I'm putting in the tail piece settles correctly and the vents vent correctly in both molds. The tail fin's gonna be made of flex resin, a different material, so we're not pouring that yet. Performance ADD. This is a slightly higher quality casting resin from Illumilite, I guess. At least when I bought it, that's the impression I was under. It's a little harder 
And I think that'll be appropriate for adding glass microspheres too, because this weakens resin and I have stronger resin. And all of that was assumed without reading the technical data sheet, so. I just like to think I'm making the right choices. I was kind of scared that the lead did not make it to the bottom in the front piece because it was hardening fast, but it did, good. I think this is the first thing we're painting over here together since the old paint station moved. Starting with white. There is some super thin plastic around the mouth that I kind of want to keep translucent. I didn't realize how thin I got that plastic. It'll really give off the largemouth bass vibe because they have really thin sections around their mouth. On multiple piece baits with weird joints like this, you really want to make sure your colors wrap all the way around because you can get a glaring little detail that was not intentional. All of that was raw umber. How appropriate does that look? That really came together well, wow. There's a little bit of black left in that brush, whoopsie dipsy. Okay, that mouth's full of red and airbrush cleaner and I made it really blotchy. Let all that drip out of there. That should be pretty interesting. Yeah, that's interesting. I don't know, would you prefer just an airbrushed color in there or some texture? But I'm coming back in with the neon red. If that pearl wine looks a little too bold for you, you're correct. Now I'm gonna do pearl platinum over all of that splotchiness. Scales. I didn't even mention that. Scales. And I haven't even started on the gills, don't worry. I mean, I guess I have started, but don't worry. heavy coat of pearl white along all of that detail. That's what's going to accentuate it. That pearl white's going to be nowhere else. My only option is solid black eyes because I don't have anything else in quarter inch, but that looks pretty sweet. And sometimes it's nice to kind of generic an eye. I bet you did not think you would witness somebody generic an eye today. I tried to get that little bubble in the casting above the eye to be cool, but it's kind of hard to tell that's there. It's on both sides. The astute among you have already noticed. That's it right there. Let's get some clear coat on it. Good and flappy, dude. I cast it and painted another one, by the way. A bit more colorful. Got a chartreuse tail for this one. And I just pulled the red tail out of the mold for this one. 
I'm gonna have to cut those corners down. The clear coat on these turned out a little imperfect. Still a perfectly functional clear coat for protecting the paint, but it's not very even. And the reason is because I didn't give the resin 48 hours. They say 24, but it's been my experience that you should probably give it two days, like 48 hours. For every last little bit of moisture to come out of the blank, that will before painting and clear coating. As the clear coat sits on top of that resin that still had moisture in it, it gets messed up. So I'm not gonna give these to Mike. Mike's the guy making me a, a kitchen knife. But look at this. That's a custom fall of 74 Velcro bait wrap. And he gave me a shirt and many, many, many. I mean, there's more. I got some more in the truck. This one literally has teeth on it. Many, many <laughs> bait wraps. Thank you, fall of 74 bait wraps. Linked below, check them out. Not sure if it's possible to keep up with the demand, so I don't know if there's any for sale, but linked below. Heavy ones tied on. Bringing in the light one too. Heavy one sinks. I think the heavy one's a complete fail. I can't get it to do anything. Wow, I hope this one doesn't sink. I put less than half of the weight in it, so it feels like it will float. Oh no. It's doing swimming stuff. But obviously I got some work to do. Let me see what a straight retrieve looks like. So it swims on a straight retrieve. That's, that's crazy. With that big mouth like that. This thing wants weight in the front piece, I think. It, yeah, it throws water really good. That's a fantastic mouth for throwing water. But these are just incorrectly made baits. Make no mistake about it. Sometimes you just get smacked right back into your place. <laughs> I thought I knew how to make that lure. I was wrong. I'll be experimenting. I'm confident that with the little bit of swim that we could eke out of this thing, we will achieve the action that we are looking for. Because in this case, I am obligated. I'll show you how it turns out in the next video or the one after that, or maybe even the one after that, I don't know. You'll know though, I'll show you. Cause it's time to go do Easter stuff. Happy Easter. Video's over. On to the next bait. Chip, this is getting me a little giddy. Makes me want to throw up. Macho drill. Oh. I'll take care of those. Old flat throat. That was not intentional. That's the kind of stuff you get from a marling bait. It's two weeks later. It will pop.